Hello and welcome to this quick session on data mining versus process mining, the differences and uh, how we can use them within an Ariba environment. Uh, as I covered in my previous video, what you can see in front of you here is Cloud for Analytics, and essentially this is a tool which we can use to look at data, drill down into it, and get insights from that information. And this is really what we call data mining. So essentially, how to change things, how to go into them, filter, get more information, actually go down, putting the data in different ways and getting insights into that information to see different data in different ways from the system. So that's really what we call data mining. How do we actually get insights and information from that, either automatically, if you're using some of the uh, artificial intelligence tools, or of course, just by manually drilling down into information uh, backwards and forwards, cutting it in different ways, so on and so forth. So that's data mining. How do we mine our way into data to get insights from it? The other side of things is what we call process mining. Now, process mining is a similar concept, but as opposed to taking data and drilling down into it in an analytical way, is to look at the various activities and connections that bring the data together. For instance, if we look at a procure to pay process, we have a purchase order, receiving goods, scanning the invoice, invoice coming in, paying the invoice, and the end of the process. So very basic P2P type process coming through. But what we can also do here is look at all the different activities that take place as subsections of that process. If I zoom in using my process mining tool, in this case, a tool called Solonis, what we can start to see here are the different elements and the different records that are actually going through different parts or different activities. So I can see in this particular case, I have to remove a payment block 8,400 times from 97,000 processed invoices and purchase orders coming through the system. I can also see that uh, some of these don't work and I have to go back and receive the goods before I can try and uh, put the invoice in the system. So different activities can show me what's actually happening in the data. If I just want to look at different areas, I can see that um, 16,000 of, uh, of my purchase orders had to be approved before they went through. So, pretty interesting. All this data is actually coming from the various tables, in this case in an SAP environment, but of course we can take them from any ERP environment and link the data together. And what this is allowing me to do is to drill down on the process or mine the process so I can see where the processes are not working as they should. So these are the activities that are taking place. In this case, I've had 5,000 uh, price changes, so on and so forth. And I can see where things are happening or should say not happening as they should. And you've got 20 reverse invoices, that's not too bad. So that's a good result. Anyway, so we can look at the different processes. What we can also do, however, is look at the connections that are occurring within the data itself, following a document from point to point. And this is where things can also get a little interesting. So I can see that uh, 10,700 of my invoices that started to be created basically got deleted because uh, the process ended there. 14,000 and went straight to invoice before they got received. So some odd things happening in there. And we can start to look at where the connections happen and where things are not happening as they should. Here we can take it down to more and more levels. And ultimately, if I actually expand this all the way for all activities and all connections, you can start to see all the different elements that can possibly be involved in processing purchase orders. As you can see here, there are quite a lot. So that's just one way of looking at this in terms of what are the different activities and connections and what are the processes or how many activities, I should say, are going through those processes. Another way of looking at this is to actually take the data, and this will just take a few moments to, to actually analyze this data for me, and view it almost as a movie over time, taking all of the different activities and seeing how many times a case runs through that activity. Now, what I mean by cases, in this case at the bottom, you can see all the different purchase orders that are flowing through the system, and obviously the dips are usually during night time. Now let me just forward this to a busier period. And what we'll start to see now is in the process, as the purchase orders start, we can start to see where the bottlenecks appear over time 
in that actual process. And of course, I can speed this up a little bit so we can see what's happening over time. So what this allows me to do is if I uh, just zoom in a little, I can see where processes are taking time to achieve and also where my bottlenecks within my organization are. I can also see, as well as just the number, of course, I can also see the ones which are not following the correct process and actually going backwards in some cases, depending on what the actual uh, activity is that they're doing. So over time, if I just zoom in a little bit more, maybe add a little more detail here, what we'll start to see over time is some of these processes starting to happen, and obviously the end process happening there. And if I speed this up, what we can see is most of the documents are going through the correct process. That's great. But there are still quite a few not doing that, and obviously we can see those happening over time. So this is what we call process mining as opposed to data mining. Looking at a process, where are the bottlenecks, how are things occurring within the organization, or where are things occurring as they shouldn't be occurring, and how are actual activities happening across the data. Now, just for interest sake, um, if I just have a look into some of the other tabs here, what we've done is actually taken some of this data straight from, in this case, an SAP ERP system, and we've just downloaded the tables, and some of you familiar with data tables in SAP can see some of the data table names there, and brought those across into here so we can get the information and do that data mining. So this isn't live data. That's not what it's about. It's about taking the processes and how do we actually see those happening where is the value in terms of how many different things do we have to do over time? Where are our bottlenecks? And how can we improve our process? And that's what data process, sorry, apologies, my apologies. That's what process mining is all about. And there we can see the difference between data mining and process mining. Thanks very much.